To be able to conduct research on warm water rays is a unique opportunity for me as a scientist. This race is a beautiful, dark beast. It's the hardest race in the world. I'm not quitting. One of the toughest things humanly possible. What is the ultimate proof of human capacity? One Water Race is unique in the aspect that it involves experienced top-level athletes and also combines the distance, the duration, sleep deprivation, the environment with the cold and the heat and the wind. My name is Marcus Moberg and I'm an associate professor at the Swedish School of Sports and Health Sciences in Stockholm, Sweden. And also they have to have a very good nutrition plan combined with the orienteering part where you have to be really focused throughout the time to find the optimal pause. Today we're in Stockholm at the Swedish School of Sport and Health Science. We're going to meet Marcus Moberg. Uh, he's a professor here and they're a partner of One Water Race for this year. And they're going to do a massive study on all the athletes. For me as a researcher, it's very unique to get the access to these athletes. These are top level athletes in their sport. <laughs> First of all, we're gonna put on the sensors to see that they function as, as they're supposed to do. We're gonna test blood glucose, blood ketones, body temperature, and also heart rate. All sensors for, for the team will be connected to one receiver. That unit will actually pick up the signal uh, and then transmit it to, to the race directory. Now it will measure the uh, skin temperature, but also the core temperature. So we'll have continuous glucose monitors on their belly and also similar ones that uh, picks up blood ketones, which occurs during energy stress or glucose uh, deprivation. We're also able to monitor their core temperature and also the skin temperature throughout the race. And then of course we'll have heart rate monitors. So that was actually interesting with these athletes and they can have be quite near their maximum heart rate, but still being quite okay. So you're just gonna pump up your veins a little bit. And in addition to the sensors, we will draw blood before and after the race. We will also look at damage markers, sort of if your muscle, your brain, uh, the heart has taken strain. Mostly we study people in the lab, but that is quite vastly different from the field setting or, or the competition. Now I can actually see your skeleton emerging here on the screen. But now the technical evolution and with the sensor technology, we can basically follow the changes as they go, which give a much better resolution for us as researchers, but also for the viewer, uh, which can interact with the sports in a different way. Now we'll do the cognitive testing that tests your uh, working memory. And that we will do before the race and also immediately or as soon as possible after to see the changes in your ability to, for, for the memory to function. So I learned quite a lot uh, from participating last year and doing the research. Christina, what about the water temperature this year? It's okay. So what I have been uh, measuring now on Christine is her core temperature. She was freezing quite a lot. Her hands were blue, uh, lips, uh, even the ears were quite blue. So she was shivering quite a lot. One aspect was that we were able to pick up uh, fever from one participant uh, before uh, the participant started, which we realized uh, afterwards, but that we will be able to monitor this year. Should I put that suit on? I, I expected the body temperature to drop uh, quite low, but I was surprised to see that they maintained quite well their, their core temperature, even though their skin temperature was, was quite cold. The second you get up, uh, it's, 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 you're standing still and it's cold. A lot of them feel a lot of cold 
during the race, shivering of course, but it doesn't seem to be critical as long as they stay active. But that will of course depend on weather conditions and everything this year. We're going to fuel up. I think then they're going to get that sniff. They're almost home. They're almost there in Lanzort. Another uh, interesting aspect that we learned last year was also the glucose sensors because I had two sensors on the same team and it was quite noticeable that uh, they had profound differences in their glucose levels throughout the race. Okay, you guys, calories, 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 fluid, fluid, fluid. Just from looking at them, I, I could tell that, that one of the participants with the highest glucose was the one who, who kept feeding. So even though we have a good strategy, it's important to actually maintain that and, and execute and actually eat the food. Get something to find that we have. Uh -oh. Too much liquid. I think the science that we do here is unique in that sense is that we try to integrate a lot of aspects. The whole mixture and putting everything, multiple pieces of the puzzle together, I think that's the unique aspect. Heart rate wise, it uh, was uh, definitely lower than we had in the lab. Uh, this is more your home area, so more convenient, uh, ranging about 110 to 145 maximum. Yeah, so the vision and the future of this field, I think is of course big data, handling uh, and AI interpretation of, of that and also from a, a viewer experience that you can get closer to the sport itself. It, it's a great enhanced viewer experience and also for now I think the athletes will benefit a lot from gaining their own data. It was a pleasure to be part of this and we're going to keep being part of this study which I believe will be some really exciting research. I'm very fond of, of the race directory and, and, and their willingness to support the research. They also see the future and development, so we're building this together. That's important for me. Ten, nine, eight, seven, six, Five, four, three, two, one, go!